Every time you scroll on TikTok, you see these amazing transitions and they get millions of likes. I can do that. So you open After Effects and decide to start using them in your own edits. But there's one problem. You have no clue how to make them. If only there was someone who could help. If you still don't go viral with your edits, you have to start using these six transitions which will boost your views to the top. Going from super easy all the way to extremely hard. And the first transition we will learn is the super viral black diffusion glitch. To show you this transition, I will be using two clips of Batman. As you can see, I already prepared. And because we want our transition to cover two clips, we're going to be adding all of the effects to adjustment layers. To create one, head to the top, click on layer, then select new and press on adjustment layer. As you can see, it will appear on your timeline. And to add this nice transition, we will go to our effects and presets tab on the right and search for Omino Diffusion. Once you found the effect, drag it onto your adjustment layer and you can see our clip is already being affected. And if you can't find this effect in your After Effects, it's because you don't have the Omino plugin installed. But don't worry, it's completely free. You can just search it on Google or get the direct link from my Discord where I can help you install it. To get back to the transition, we obviously don't want it to cover our entire edit. And to fix that, we're going to have to adjust the duration of our adjustment layer. As you can see, I want my transition to start approximately here, a few frames before the clips change. So I'm going to go and drag my time indicator right here, then select my adjustment layer and press Ctrl, Shift and D to cut it. Then I'm going to go ahead to where I want the transition to end, which in my case is going to be about here and cut the layer again by pressing Ctrl, Shift and D. Now we have these two axis parts, which we can just select and then press delete to delete them. And that way we have isolated our transition to only be happening when our clips change. But the values don't seem right yet. So we're going to click onto our adjustment layer and go ahead to where our scene cuts. Then we will go to our effects control panel and set a keyframe for the error across setting. Change the value from 1 to 1.5. And this is what it will look like when our transition is happening. Now, if you select the layer and press U, you can see this keyframe and we obviously want to have a fading transition. We don't want it to be in this extreme look. We want it to gradually increase and then the transition happening. So we're going to go to the very beginning of our adjustment layer and then set the value from 1 to 0 0.9. That way our transition will be slowly fading up instead of just appearing. So we will go ahead 10 frames, which you can count by just moving your time indicator. So every time you move, you have one frame. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Here we will set our third keyframe and put the value to 1. So instead of 1.5, put it to 1. And then at the very end of our adjustment layer, where our transition is supposed to be over, we're going to put the value back to 0 0.9. A little secret that I like to end towards the end is the opacity fading to make it a bit smoother. So we will move our time indicator to our third keyframe and then press T on our keyboard while having the layer selected. That will bring up our opacity. Then we're going to set a keyframe right here for 100 and then go to the very end where our animation is over and put the value down to 0. That way our transparency will slowly decrease and our transition will look a bit smoother. The last thing we want to do to make it look very natural, press U on our keyboard while having the adjustment layer selected which will bring up all our keyframes and then we're going to select them all at once. Right click, go to keyframe assistant and hit easy ease. That will just make the animation a bit smoother and now when we play our edit we have this nice animation. By the way, if you want to follow along, the project file from this video will be available to all my community members, which you can join via the second link in the description. Next, and even more popular, we're going to have this awesome glitch transition. This time, I will apply the transition to these clips of Jeremy Fragrance. And again, like I said before, we're going to start off by making a new adjustment layer. So head to the top, click on layer, select new, and then adjustment layer. For this transition, I like to make the adjustment layer exactly 30 frames long. And if you wonder how you can count the frames, you always have these markers on your timeline as well. So I'm going to cut the adjustment layer where I want the animation to start, which for me is going to be about 45 five frames. Then I'm going to go ahead to one minute and 15 frames and cut it again by pressing Ctrl, Shift and D. Delete the excess parts. And this time we will use an effect called Glitchify. So go to your effects and presets and search for Glitchify and then drag it onto your adjustment layer. If you can't find this effect, again, you can get it from the Discord server. If we play the transition right now, you can see it's kind of choppy and we definitely want to change that. So we're going to start by going to the beginning of our adjustment layer, which you can see is right here. And then we will set a keyframe for our Glitchify amount right here at the very top. And we're going to put the value from 50 down to zero, meaning our glitch amount will be zero. The glitch is supposed to be most visible when the two scene switches, which you can see right here, is where they cut. So we're going to select the adjustment layer and press U to bring up the keyframes and then increase the amount where our scenes cut right here to 60. As you can see in the preview, our glitch is now fully running. Now we will go ahead five frames. So we're going to count one, two, three, four, five and put the glitch amount from 60 down to five. So it slowly decreases again. Now we'll go ahead another two frames. So one, two and put it back up to 20. So we have a slight decrease and then it increases again. By doing that, the transition will last a bit longer and won't be so sudden. And then lastly, to end it off, we're going to go to the end of our adjustment layer and put the value back down to zero. So it slowly fades out. Don't forget to select all the keyframes, right click, go to keyframe assistant and hit easy ease to add our natural touch. And now when you preview the edit, you can see it looks way better than in the beginning. Next, I will show you this very common, but extremely useful white solid transition. And I know you might think, oh, this is so simple. I already know how to do this, but I found out a new way of doing it. So listen, 
up. As you can see, I prepared two clips from Morbius. And the special thing about this transition that's different from all the others is that this time we won't use an adjustment layer, but a white solid layer. So instead of heading to layer, clicking on new and selecting adjustment layer, select solid instead. Now make sure the color is set to white. Now the white solid should be covering our entire screen, but we obviously don't want it throughout the whole edit. So we're going to go to the point where our clips split and then go 10 frames before that. Now here we're going to cut the solid layer by pressing Control shift and D, same as the adjustment layer. And then from this point, we will go ahead another 25 frames, which is right here, and cut the layer again by pressing Control shift and D. Now delete the excess parts like before, and we're going to start this transition from the very beginning. So go back to the beginning of the layer and then press T on your keyboard to bring up the opacity. Now we want the transition to be completely invisible at the start, then fade in and at the end fade out again. So we're going to start by putting a keyframe for the opacity and put the value instead of 100 to 0 so it's invisible. Then we will go ahead to the point where our scenes cut, which you can see right here, and now increase the value all the way up to 100. And now in between these two keyframes, our white solid will flash up. And to make it flash out again, we're going to go to the end of the layer and put the opacity back to 0. Now again, we're going to select all the keyframes, right click, go to keyframe assistant and then hit easy ease. But this time, instead of just leaving them the normal way, we're actually going to adjust one of the graphs. So while having the keyframes selected, open your graph editor and now you can see the value graph of our animation. And this is a topic in itself, you don't have to understand it, but the only thing I want you to do is to click onto the top point and then drag this one down so it looks something like this. That will smoothen out the fade out of the animation and make it more linear. If you've done that, close the graph editor again. And now lastly, to enhance the look of our white solid, because this way it's just very plain, we're going to go to our effects and presets and search for CC vignette. This is a standard After Effects effect. Drag it onto the white solid and you can see that way we get this kind of spotlight effect. Now when you play the edit, you can see we have this awesome white transition. I'm sure you already learned a lot, so scroll down and hit subscribe, because next we have this awesome halftone ripple transition. This time I want to apply the transition to these two clips of the flash. So we're going to start again by going to the top, clicking on layer, new and adjustment layer. But because the halftone and ripple effect are two separate effects, we also want to add two adjustment layers. So what we can do is we can just click onto the one we just created and then press Ctrl and D to duplicate it. You can see now we have two, but they're going to have a different length. The top one, which will be for our halftone effect, will start three frames before our clip switches. So we're going to go ahead one, two, three, and cut it right here by pressing Ctrl, Shift and D. The bottom one will be for our ripple effect and we want to have that start after our clip switched. So we're going to go ahead to where it switched, you can see right here, and then cut the bottom one as well by pressing Ctrl, Shift and D. And then they're going to both end when our clip is over. So go right here, select both of them, and then press Ctrl, Shift and D. Now as always, delete the excess parts and your timeline should look like this now. The first effect we'll apply is called S underscore halftone. Again, this is from the Sapphire plugin, so if you can't find the effect, make sure to get it from the Discord server. To find the effect, we have to go to our effects and presets and search for S underscore halftone. You can see there's three different ones, but we only want to use the top one that's called S underscore halftone. Drag it onto the top adjustment layer that's a bit longer. And as you can see, we now have these nice dots. And here you can change how many dots there are by adjusting the frequency. If you go up, they will be a bit thinner and there's going to be more dots. If you go down, it's going to be less dots, but they're also going to be bigger. I usually like to go for around 70. The second effect we will add to the bottom adjustment layer and it's called BCC Ripple Dissolve. Once you drag this effect onto the bottom adjustment layer, the shorter one, we're going to have to change two very important settings because right now the animation is going to look something like this. The first setting we want to change is the height of the waves. You can see right now it's set at 30, but we want to reduce that to 18. That way the clip will be less distorted. And then for the next setting, we have to open the animation tuning box and put the ease in to negative 20. What that will do is make our animation faster at the beginning. Next, we obviously want to adjust our halftone because right now it's just popping in and then out. And like all the other transitions, we have to make it fade in and then fade out. For the fading in, it's going to be simple. We're going to go to the beginning of the top layer, which is the longer one, and then press T on our keyboard to bring up the opacity. Now set a keyframe and put the value down to zero so you cannot see the dots at all. Then go to the transition where the switch is happening and put the value from zero up to 100. And then to make the fade out, we're going to go to the end of our adjustment layer and put the value from 100 down to zero. But don't forget to select all the keyframes again, then right click, go to keyframe assistant and hit easy ease to make them look more natural. When you play the clip, you can see we have this nice ripple effect with the half tone. And if you don't want to tone up the look of your edit, make sure to click the first link in the description to get my exact color correction that I used to turn my edits from looking like this into looking like this. If you're an editor, it's a must have because it will not just boost your quality, but also get you more views and speed up your editing process. You can apply it with just one click and save yourself hours of work. So click the first link in the description now to get 70% off limited time offer. Next, we're going to do this awesome invert one frame transition. And to do that, I again have two clips of Batman and we're going to start by creating our adjustment layer. So head to the top, click on layer, go to new and click adjustment layer. And because this one frame transition is a very short transition, we want to also cut our adjustment layer pretty short. I will go for maximum two frames 
frames. So go to where your clip switches and then press Ctrl Shift and D. Now go ahead two more frames, one, two, and cut your adjustment layer again by pressing Ctrl Shift and D. Delete the excess parts and you should be left with a small portion, which will be responsible for our one frame transition. And to make this cool transition, we're going to search for the invert effect and then drag it onto the adjustment layer. I'm not a big fan of the standard look it has. I want to kind of change the colors. So next I'm going to search for hue slash saturation and then also drag it onto the adjustment layer. Now, if you go to the master hue and then increase the value, you can see our color on the clip changes. And I like to go for a red kind of look. So I'm going to put it all the way till it's red. And then when we play the clip, you can see we have this nice transition. Next, we got the hardest, but by far coolest looking transition, which is this black bus lighting animation. For this one, the setup will be a bit different because again, like the white solid flash, it's not going to be with the adjustment layer this time. Instead, I prepared two clips right here and very important, don't pre-compose them so that you have the whole room to the left and right that you can work with. We're going to start by overlapping our clips because obviously we want this animation to be happening in between two clips and not one to end and then the next one to pop up because that would look kind of weird. So we want both clips to fade up at the same time and switch at the same time. In my case, I'm going to drag the top clip to the left till it overlaps for around 40 frames. And the first effect I will add is the zoom out before it switches the position. Depending on how fast you want your zoom out to be, you obviously have to adjust your values. But in my case, I wanted to start around this time right here. Once I found the right place where I want to start my animation, I'm going to select my layer and then press S on my keyboard to bring up the scaling property. Now with scaling, you can adjust the size of your clip and I'm going to set a keyframe at the very first frame where I want the animation to start. Leave it as a standard value, in my case 6.9, and then go ahead to where you want your clip to be fully faded out, which in my case is kind of when they start overlapping. So I will go like five frames ahead and I'm going to scale my clip down by around 10%. So instead of having 69, I'm going to put in 59. And that way, when we go back, you can see it's now kind of zooming out. And right now we didn't add the black bars. That's why it still looks transparent. And for the next clip, we will do it the other way around because that one will already be zoomed out due to it replacing the current clip. That's why this time we have to go to the place where we wanted to zoom in and the transition to be completed. Then I'm going to click the layer and press S on my keyboard and now set a keyframe. But instead of starting with 69, we're going to start with 59. That way, when it comes in and replaces the other clip, they match up from the size, as you can see. And now the second keyframe is going to be where we want the animation to be finished. So I'm going to go ahead approximately the same distance that these two keyframes have. So I'm going to go around here. And as you can see, we now have two keyframes. The first ones are zooming the clip out and then the next ones are going to zoom the clip back in. Next, we're going to add the positioning because obviously we want the clip to fade in. And we will start with the first clip. So we go to the point where we want it to start. Then select the layer and press P this time to bring up the positioning. Now make sure you right click and select separate dimensions. That way we can later adjust the graphs and make it look smoother. And we're going to set a keyframe for the X position. Now, if we press Z on our keyboard, you will see both the keyframes. And I would kind of suggest you to overlap the positioning with the scaling. That way it will look a bit more natural. And then for the second positioning keyframe, we will go to where we want the animation to be finished, which in my case is going to be the ending of the first clip right here. And then I'm going to decrease the positioning value for the X position all the way till our clip is outside our window. And we're going to adjust it till it's all the way out there. Next, we need to make the top clip come from the right side into the left side of the screen so we can have this kind of switch. And here it's very important that you put the keyframes at the exact same position for both clips. So this time we're going to select the top clip and press P on our keyboard and again, separate both dimensions. Then we're going to orientate ourselves of the keyframes we set onto the bottom layer. You can see the last one right here is where our animation is supposed to finish. So this is where the second clip has to be in the center of the screen. So right here, we're going to set our first position in keyframes, both of them. And then we will go to the beginning of our clip right here. Now, opposite to the first clip, this time we want to move our clip to the right side because we want it to go from right to left. So instead of decreasing the X value, this time we're going to increase it until it's all the way out of the screen. And now when we play, you can see we already have this animation, but obviously this does not look smooth. And that's why we're going to add our graphs. So press U twice to bring up all your keyframes and then you're going to select all of them at once. Right click, go to keyframe assistant and then hit easy ease. Let's start with the scaling of the first clip. So select both of the keyframes, then open the graph editor. And the graph we want to use for these animations is pretty simple. We're going to start by clicking on top of it and then moving the top handle to the right a little bit, not all the way. And then we're going to do the opposite thing for the bottom one. Instead of moving it to the right, we're going to move it to the left. So it looks like this. Then we're going to close the graph editor and do the same thing for the position as well. Open the graph editor and then select the top value, drag it to the right a bit and the bottom one to the left. And then of course, the same thing for the top layer as well. So select both the keyframes, open the graph editor and then start by adjusting this graph, drag it a bit to the right and then this one to the left. Close the graph editor and do the same for the scaling keyframes that we set. And now when we preview the edit, you can see we already have this smooth animation. But next, I want to have some more control over these black bars at the top. And I also want to make them a bit thicker. So what we're going to add on top is a black solid layer. Go back to your layer window, click on new and then click on solid. This time, make sure the color is black. Then bring up your keyframes by pressing U and we want to cut our solid to our scaling keyframes. So go to the first one right here and then press Control Shift and D while having the solid selected. Go to the last scaling keyframe and again, cut the solid layer by pressing Control Shift and D. Now we're going to delete the excess parts and the effect we're going to use for the black bars is called CC Jaws. Make sure you drag it onto the solid 
layer and then we're going to start by putting the height to zero percent now to actually make it fade up we're going to go to the beginning where we want the black bars to start and we're going to set a keyframe for the completion and put it to 100 which means that there will be no black bars then we're going to go ahead to our second scaling keyframe right here and set a second keyframe for the completion at 80 percent now go to the next scaling keyframe which you can see right here and set another keyframe at 80 percent and then the last keyframe is going to be at the end of our black solid layer and we're going to put that to 100 percent to have the black bars fade out again the last thing we have to do is of course adjust our graphs so select all the keyframes right click go to keyframe assistant and hit easy ease and copy the same graphs we did earlier for the zoom in animation and the position animation once that's done it should look something like this and we can close our graph editor make sure you enable motion blur which is this button right here for all your layers and now when we play ahead you can see we have this awesome switch transition the cool thing about this transition is that you can combine it with all the other transitions we did earlier for example you can combine it with the glitch we made earlier that's why it's extremely important you add these additional black bars because it will give you overall more control about what you can do from here on. If this video helped you, make sure to smash the like button and hit subscribe for more. As I said, check out my private community for this project file and hours worth of uncut editing content, all via the second link in the description. Thank you for watching and see you next time.